Hello, and welcome to Great Hang, the greatest hang that's ever hanged. I'm your hang, Tim McLaughlin, coming to you with your other hang, Micah Fox. Hello, Micah. Hello, Timmy. How are you? I'm uh, I'm okay. I just sat in some piss on the toilet, so I could be a little less covered in piss. Why'd you do that? Did you like it? I did not like it, actually. I had to do a little whore's bath in the sink before walking down who here. Pissed on the, who pissed all over the toilet? Listen, it could, be, it could be anybody. It could be a person who pees point blank, or it could be a person who's too lazy to lift up the toilet seat and then put it back down after they're done. Toe? It could be them. It could be them. Hmm. Well... We'll, we'll never, never get know. to we'll never get to the bottom of this. My I think it was possibly that dastardly fucking fiend. If you say Moriarty. Dr. Moriarty. <laughs> professor Moriarty? He might be a professor and not a doctor. He His might be both fesser. to be awesome. Well, anyways, it was Prime Moriarty and I'm sorry that he did that to you and Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah. if that's the worst thing that happens to you today, not too bad. All right, here we go. Let's get into it. It's the show, Micah. We're doing it just the two of us because scheduling got fucked up and we didn't book a guest. Yeah, it got fucked up by neither of us doing it, and that's really going to get in the way of uh, us not fucking up. I brought it up a lot. You know what? You did. Yep. So we can't say I didn't bring it up a lot because (laughs) I brought it up a bunch of times and we just never got it done. But we're here. It's a Sunday. The Colts just lost because the referees absolutely fucked them. I think, Micah, we had a conversation yesterday. What are I'm, I'm moving because I, this part of the couch is all dented in because you were sitting on it for like three hours straight. So I need a, I need a more sturdy perch. Oh, okay. Well, very good then. <laughs> uh, so the Colts lost by one. The referees absolutely handed the game to the Cleveland Browns. Pissed me off to no fucking end. But that's okay. Micah, I've been thinking. Uh-oh. We had a conversation. Danger. We had a conversation yesterday after I got home from work, after I had electrocuted myself at work on the breaker box of the bowling machines. When I demanded that you quit your job immediately. Yes, and I'm not going to quit my job immediately. Because you are not capable of working in a high danger job without hurting yourself. That was like the second time you hurt yourself yesterday. Well, yeah, I hurt my back picking up the lane oiler because it weighs like 300 pounds. And then I hurt, and then I electrocuted myself. <laughs> but I think I'm going to quit in November. Wait, really? I think so. I got, because I, you're right, I've been thinking about it, and it really is not the place for a guy like me who continuously gets hurt on a very regular basis. That's awesome, Tim. But I need. To get some more money somehow. So yeah, 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 for sure. Even though I will hold you to that you will pay me f- to not work there. So <laughs> I I did in a desperate <laughs> plea. I said I would pay him to not work. Just in thinking about him dying <laughs> at the bowling alley, I was like, if he dies at the bowling alley and I could have theoretically supported him not dying. If I die at the bowling alley, though, that would be pretty sick. I mean, talk about a real fucking hero's journey about like a man who really lived a bowling alley style of life and then died at the bowling alley. Tim, you like worked there for a year. I'm saying my whole fucking vibe, yo. Oh, just die there. (laughs) My whole fucking vibe, yo. My whole vibe, yo. It's a fucking bowling alley ass vibe. It was the other day he was like going to get squished. Like the thing that comes down and resets the pins, he almost just got squished in it. I didn't almost get squished. You were going to have the death of an Oompa Loompa. I didn't know. First of all, the Oompa Loompas never die. (laughs) It's the children that die. I knew you were going to call me out on that. You don't know they don't die. You just see the ones that are still alive. Well, the children don't die. The children are all fine. But you know, we don't know that, actually. Yes, we do. At the end of the movie, they all come out of the thing. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. They all die. No, I, First of all, they do not all die. That little Mike guy doesn't die. He just becomes tiny and gets stuck in the TV. And then the other one, they're like, yeah, they'll ring him out on the other side. They're like, fat one who gets stuck in the tube. Yeah, he doesn't die. He's still got air. He just gets stuck in the tube. They're dead. Do the children die in... Uh, Willy Wonka. Because I'm pretty sure they all live. Towards the end of what happens to the children? 
Augustus gets sucked to a pipe after falling in the Chaka River. Violet swells up into a giant blueberry. Veruca Salt goes down the garbage chute. And Mike gets shrunk into the size of a chocolate bar. And then the Oompa Loompas sing a song about their mortality. Do the kids survive? Uh, Willy Wonka didn't kill the kids. He didn't kill them directly. They died in his care. While the movie might not offer up the details about what happens to the kids visiting Willy Wonka's factory, the Raul Dahl book and its sequels, in the end, Charlie gets to see each of them leaving the factory, hopefully with lessons learned. In the book, not in the movie. Well, Case then maybe I was closed. reading the book and watching No, we the, watching know the you are not book. reading the book. <laughs> we know that. Maybe someone was... Your Honor, <laughs> I bring up... <laughs> Uh, piece of evidence A, Tim reading the news. Exhibit I, Exhibit I. illiteracy. I, <laughs> maybe, maybe someone was reading it to me and I was watching the film in my mind's eye. I went into my mind palace and watched the film. All right, let's go into your mind library and finish the book. All right, so the book ends. The kids are all walking out. And then Willy Wonka has a falling down esque moment, and he pulls out a gun made of chocolate, and he shoots all of them in the brain. And then he runs over and eats their brains, and he says, "There's nothing more delicious than children's b- brains." He says, "Wow, Tim, that was impressive." That's a. T- are you are you a children's book writer? I'm a spooky book guy. I'm more of a Halloween esque villain. I'm trying to be like spooky for Halloween. What is it? The great. Toilet seat pisser. I don't know. We don't. We still don't know the who that is. The great toilet seat piss caper. We don't know who that is, and we may never know. We may never know. It could. It could have only been three of us. But I think I may. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna tell the GM at the bowling alley that I'm gonna have to put in, because it may be too dangerous <laughs> for me to work. There. Here's the thing. I think you should threaten to quit. You, might, you know what I think is gonna happen is they're gonna offer to pay you more. Maybe. I have. I'm having like actual deja vu about it, where it's like the only time you get. A raise there is if you threaten to leave. Yeah, I can be like, hey, gang, uh, I have numerous bruises, uh, a permanent scar. I have two permanent scars and an electrocution. And I just don't think for the money that I can continue to work at the bowling alley and (laughs) endanger myself. That's how I feel about it. I'm glad you're doing that. Thank you, Tim. Even though I was saying that it worked for our ancestors, working for meager wages to get by and putting their life on the line every day, they used to do it all the time in the coal mines. What ans- Not my ancestors. Maybe mine. Maybe a couple of mine. Fucking drunk, hanging out, riding I, bikes I found around. out my, my ancestors made moonshine Yeah. to uh, bribe the Cossacks into not raping them and stuff. That's pretty good. That's good. You never want to get you. Listen, whatever you can do to not get raped, I say do it. I'm a big That's proponent right. of not getting raped. I don't know about anybody else on this show, but I'll take a hard stance on rape, and I think it is not very good. And that's your t- Tim's shame of the week. <laughs> and that's your Tim McLaughlin guarantee. <laughs> rape is bad. Um, all right, Michael. Well, that was good. It's a nice little starting segment. I dropped a little truth bomb on the show. What was, oh, the rape is bad? It, yes, and that also that I'm going, to, or I guess it was an announcement that I'm probably going to quit my job. I can't wait. Everybody in the, well, Tom. You haven't even the, been there a full year. I love it. Tom in the chat was like, you should quit as well. He what goes, the you fuck? Get too, you get too injured. I, listen. Wait, I, he, you were fighting me about this last night. I was in tears upset over how Tim comes home every day with a new injury. You were also like, upset. You were like, also I can't upset. do that, blah, blah, blah. And then Tom, one of your dumbest, most stupidest friends ever who listens to this podcast, <laughs> says, yeah, actually, that's a good idea. And now you're going to do it because you listen now, to Tom? I was, your smart girlfriend. Is Tom going to pay you to not work? Listen. Tom, are you going to pay him to not work? I go, God, thank I, you, brother. I wrote, I wrote in the chat, I said, God forbid a guy gets electrocuted at work tells his girlfriend about it now he's the bad guy i go how am i gonna fucking get electrocuted and then also get yelled at about it and they were like she's right also i think waking up this morning and my arm still hurting was <laughs> are you fucking serious go to a doctor i think it'll be fine hey mike my cousin mike listens to this he's an electrician uh, Mike, hit me up. Let me know if uh, I should go to the doctor. In go to the doctor. Three or four days. Oh. I don't want to go to the doctor. 
I hate going to the doctor. My doctor is a fucking bitch. All right. You have to go anyway. You promised me you'd set an appointment. Oh, yeah. I'll do that on Monday. He's been saying this for months. I'm going to do it. Micah, that was catching up. Did you have anything exciting happen this week? I heard you went to Peak Skill. Oh, I went to Peak Skill? Man, what a time did I have. I performed at the Gleason's. Oh, is it named after Jackie? I don't know. It wasn't. It's like a big fucking music venue. It looks like it has a giant stage on it and lots of like tables all spread out. Not not exactly right for comedy. More you for sent music. me a picture. And it did not look like a good comedy venue. But they had a, everyone had a good time. You got some big laughs in there. You know, it's kind of hard to keep it all together because everyone's like so spread out and like had the opportunity to talk amongst their table. But uh, everyone had a good time, I think. You know, the host, she was fun, you know, just immediately like because like starting off, you know, everyone's eating and no one's really paying attention. She just started screaming rape. Mm. Just rape, rape. And, you and I wouldn't have liked that because I think it's bad. Well, you want to know something? It did quiet the room down. <laughs> People, they say when you're getting raped, you should uh, scream fire. Oh, instead really? of rape, yeah, because nobody gives nobody gives a fuck about rape, but people care about like if they're gonna get burnt to death and stuff. But she screamed rape and it worked, I guess, because it's what illegal it... to scream fire in a building. Oh, maybe. But if so, wait. If you're so you're in an, you're walking down the alley to get home. Yeah. A man jumps out, grabs you. you Trigger sc- warning. This is about rape. A man jumps out, grabs you, holds you down, starts trying to plug you with his fucking little little donger, and you just start <laughs> yelling fire. Yeah, you have to s- yell fire. And he, what does he think? The trash is on fire, and then he's got to go. No, this is not for him, Tim. You said because people are scared of fire. Yeah, so that other people, listen, passers by, or people in the buildings nearby. They'll be concerned that there's a fire because they don't want to burn up and die also. Oh, and then they'll come outside. Then they'll come outside. And, and then they out. all start watching, taking pictures, filming, not yeah. really helping. They'll be like, oh, TikTok. is his dick rubbing against your crotch so hard it's creating a little fire? Interesting. Now, that's interesting. And should we make a viral video of that? I don't know. No. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Well, then never mind. We no, won't. A viral video of <laughs> someone, what, getting raped until a fire starts? <laughs> Tim, your ability to assess what's going to make a viral video is the reason that only our friends listen to the show. It's all right. Our friends and several fans. It's a good show. And also, I'm going to have to reach out to the fans here. And this is the plug section. Okay. If I quit this job, we're gonna. I'm going to really need some extra cash. So if you could sign up for the Patreon at patreon.com slash great hang, that would be fucking huge. It's a great show. All the shows on there are great. We have hot shows. We've got our live. It's the only place where you can get the live advice show every month. The live advice show is so fucking good. It's super good. Just even if you don't want to commit, just like sign up and watch the ones we've already done. Well, yeah, but they're also the sound is terrible on a couple of them. But the the newest one is great. Shut the fuck up. Uh, but I we're trying to scam our fans right now. I figured out the sound. I've got it down good. It sounds good. You're gonna now. be poor forever. Yeah, probably. But that's all right. And you know what? No, I've come to terms with it. It's not that big a deal. What's worse, being poor forever or being rich and unhappy? Why does it? Why would we be unhappy? Oh. Can't we be rich and happy? Nope. I know I so many so. people who are rich and happy. Who? Name them. Name Karen more. Feehan. Oh, yeah. That's true. She's pretty happy. All right. Tim uh, Dillon. Uh, well, I don't know. He's happy. You sure? Fuck yes, dude. That man eats a live lobster every night. All right. All right. Who else? Uh, fucking uh, Gandhi. Wrong. He yes? didn't have any money. He might have had money. Are you eat. fucking kidding me? That dude was rich as shit. Well, that's what, see, Nepo babies. Oprah. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't know. We don't know, Oprah. Oprah's got that O face. Uh Uh-huh. All right. Well, you only named a couple. That's not that many. So, listen to the Patreon. Mr. Beast. We don't know if Mr. Beast is happy. Oh, yeah, he is. He is autistic, for sure. Yeah, so he can't, he couldn't hide it if he was unhappy. I guess that's true. Anyways. Be a Mr. Beast type, very charitable person, and sign up for the Patreon at patreon.com slash great hang. Of course, listen to Tough Questions. And uh, the live advice show got moved. It has been moved. It is October 29th at 9 p.m. at the gutter. Normally, it's the first Sunday of the month, but these fucking lame-ass New York Marathon motherfuckers are in there taking up all the space. So uh, the 
so we got had to move it. We had to move it to November or for, from November fifth to the October 29th. So it's October 29th at nine p.m. I made a very cool flyer. Adjust your schedules. Adjust your schedules if you were planning to go. And I will no longer be going to Boston with Tom. If you were if you live in Boston and were excited to see me and Tom out there, the shit got fucked up and we couldn't go. So we're out on that. And then that's it. Those are all my plugs. Micah, oh, and listen to Tough Questions. Of course, the show with the toughest questions with one of the gayest hosts, Jeff Sheen. Um, and uh, you can see me uh, this Thursday at Talon Bar. Um, at, I don't know, it says 2 p.m. because that's probably the time it was when I put that in my schedule. But I'm it's also like on eight. that show. And then uh, on Friday the 27th, I will be at Silo in Bushwick, not at Cobra Club. But you guys should still check out Cobra Club. Um, and then... Uh, you know, I, I'll be at Sincerely Ophelia. I don't know. These are all bar shows. Who gives a shit? Just follow my Instagram at M-Y-K-A-F-O-X or Twitter at M-Y-K-A-F-O-X and you can find all the dates and times of my shit. But mostly just fucking check out the Patreon because now I'm like financially, even more financially responsible for Tim because he's um, too clumsy to work. Well, listen, here's the thing. I get a job. Also, follow me at hot underscore comic 69. I get a job. I get these jobs. You know, Mike is like, you need to get a job, get a job. You need to get a job. Then I do. And now they're yeah, it's, it's too dangerous for it's, me to work. I invented the idea of needing to get a job. Now, this is on me, now, actually. Now every now there's too much danger in my life. Until I brought it up, I, Tim, now I can't have a job at all. Yeah, if I hadn't brought it up, Tim wouldn't have needed any money at all. That's right. I would have skated by like I normally do somehow. Not living with me, I bet. Probably not. But that is the end of the plug section. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Here we go. Spit that bit. Micah, you got any new bits to spit? I do, but it's a risky one, Tim. Is it about Israel? Yes. Stop. No, we're not doing it. Why not? All right, fine. Oh, we, oh wait. We can't, uh, we can't address what's happening in the world on this podcast. Are you scared? I'm not scared. Are you, af- are you afraid to go there? I'm not afraid. Uh, listen, I'm not afraid to go anywhere. Are you a white man who has barely been paying attention to this situation at all and for whom it b- does not affect you, afraid to touch it? No. I'm worried about the backlash and criticism you will get from people online for your bit. And then I don't want to hear you at home be like, can you believe that these motherfuckers are saying this? And then I'm going to say, yes, yes, I can. Well, here we go. All right. So, you know, I'm a Jew and I don't I don't I don't really admit that publicly a lot, you know, and I think we're starting to see why. Mm. But, uh, you know, people are like, you know, they're, you know, like I'm a Jew, you know, but like everyone's like, you know, where is, you know, where you stand on this whole like Israel, Palestine situation, you know, pick a side, pick a side. And uh, so I think I'm going to do um, a side reveal. You're going to pick a side. Like I'm going to do a pick a side reveal, you know, like a gender reveal party. I'm going to do a side reveal party, you know, and I'll do that by like launching a rocket. Uh huh. You know, and whatever whatever side it lands on, that's the side. And it's gonna either be like green for Palestine or okay. blue for Israel. You know. All right. Because all these gender reveal parties, they're already killing people with those just to say the gender of your baby. So wouldn't it make more sense to be a side reveal, and then you're you're doing good for your um side in the conflict. Okay, that's the bit. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it, it tracks as a stand up comedy bit. Well, everyone in the car ride home from Gleason's thought it was hilarious. They did? It kind of it came up organically in conversation. Uh huh. But everyone was dying laughing, so I don't know. Okay, so everyone on the way from home from Gleason's thought it was funny and they were humoring you because they didn't really know you? No, wrong. <laughs> I think it's more of a sketch than it was. Like, yeah, it could be a sketch, but it's still a bit. A bit is a sketch, I guess. If so, you think about like, but how, what, so the rocket, what the rocket lands on one side or the other, or maybe it just explodes in the right color. Watch, and then it like explodes in pink, and then everyone's disappointed because it's a girl. There you go. That's funny. See, that's pretty funny. Thanks. All right. Well, my guy. Thanks think- for helping with the bit. You're just gonna start your new bit. You got anything else to add? I wasn't going to start it. Oh, I thought you were about to. I was going to say, I think the girl thing was good. Oh, okay. I said, I think that's good. And? That's a good take where I don't think it makes anyone upset, really. Thanks, Tim. Because then you're not picking either side. Right. 
and it's a girl. And yeah. no one gives a shit about that. Right. Feminism is over. Feminism. Oh, fuck feminism. It never even took foot. It tried. Oh, it tried These so hard. These mouthy bitches tried it so tried hard. It tried so hard and come so far. But in the end, women don't really come. That's true. true. That's something. It's something, and it's, God, it was close. It was close to Just a Just like song. a lot of women are close to coming, but and never. You're, do you're doing it. Never actually do. You're doing it, Peter. I, uh, um, but just just so we're clear, I am on the side of death and destruction. Okay. Oh, interesting. All right, good. Well, Micah, it's good that you said your side out loud. I think the I think the pink thing is funny. Thank you. Uh, and I think that could be something. I don't have any real bits really any uh, today. I don't really have anything. So your help for me was saying part of that was good. Sometimes you need to hear it. <laughs> I helped you work it around to where you thought of the girl thing. I thought of the girl thing in the car. I just didn't get that far. You did get that far. You just forgot to say it. I did not forget to say it. You were already saying how much it sucked before I got there. But you, there was a nice little pause where you could have kept going with the bit. I'm just saying I didn't think of it here. <laughs> okay. I don't want you taking credit for any of that. <laughs> Bless Excuse you. Excuse me. All right. Well, I won't. Okay. I, uh, I'll take credit for the beginning part where we went into the segment. Okay. <laughs> so I'll take credit for that. that wait, we, wait, the segment that I created? Yeah. Okay. But I brought us into it. Yes, good job, my Tim. Hosting. You know what? <laughs> Never let anyone say you don't contribute to this. Hey, if anyone says I don't contribute, I'd love to see him put any amount, of, I'd love to see him put the amount of work you put into it and if a podcast comes out. Now... Let's do hot take of the week. Hot take, summer in the city. Tim, I got a doozy for you. You are going to hate it. Oh, really? Well, Rasheed Rice res- caught a touchdown for my fantasy team, so that is putting me in a good mood already. Put your phone down. What are you fucking do- checking the scores for? I wasn't. It just popped up on my thing. See? All right, here this we go. Receiving TD caught. This is from Am I the Asshole? It's a classic. Put your phone down. Mm-hmm. It's a classic. Am I the Asshole, Tim? Yes. For making my partner's daughter use my period underwear. Yes. Ew. What? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> buy her new underwear. Go to the fucking dollar store and buy her some fucking period underwear. What the fuck? Hand me down ass period underwear? You think they sell period underwear at the dollar store? Isn't your period underwear just shitty underwear that you don't mind getting fucking blood on? That's what it used to mean. That oh. is what it used to mean. It used period underwear it used to mean underwear that you already got your period on and is stained. Right, which is what I was, which is what I took as an understanding from what you just read to me. But, but in the last few years, there have been people who've created underwear you're supposed to wear on your period that collects the blood in the underwear. And then what do you do with it? You use it as a sacrifice to our Lord and <laughs> to our uh, to Satan. You um you actually bury it in the ground and it grows a baby. Oh, dear God. We can't be growing babies in the ground. Oh, what? You're going to carry them yourself? I don't think so. <sighs> I'm anti-ground babies. Um, Mike, yeah, I'm going to say... Where do you think peanuts came from? Uh, oh, from the peanut man. Or the Cabbage Patch Kids. The Cabbage Patch Kids, those are period bloods that became a, a fucking national sensation. That's right. Tim, you are a fool. Periods are unfertilized eggs. But... Yeah, there is period underwear. You bleed into it, and then you're supposed to rinse it out, clean mm-hmm. it out, wear it again next time, you know? So that's what this is. That's so, what this is. So she has special... I thought, my understanding as a man was that period underwear was bad underwear. So I, of course, thought yes. But I also think, yes, buy her some other some underwear for her fucking self. Where? We don't need any hand-me-down period... Here's the thing. If I have pants that I shit in, <laughs> if I have my shit pants that I take a fucking big old dump in, and then I have like a step kid and I'm like, oh, are you taking dumps in your pants? Here, use my fucking dump pants. And fucking take a shit in those too. It's disgusting. Tim, all of your pants are shit pants. Well, I'm, and I'm not trying to give them to anyone Yeah, is what I'm saying. All right. Okay. So your take is yes, the, the asshole. Yes, I think it's a nice. It's probably a nice intent. It's like in, the intent is nice, but yes, buy her real, buy her her own shit. My partner and I live together, and his daughters Leah, eleven, and Rachel, eight, Jews, uh, were staying with us. It was school holidays a few weeks ago in our country. They don't say where. I work from home, so the girls were with me during the day. 
During the school holidays, Leah got her first period. Oh. Her first one. I hope so. She's 11. This is only fucking 11. Hormones in the I know. Food. That's the problem. The real problem is that people were feeding them milk. Uh, but the problem was we didn't have pads at home. We have tampons for guests, and I use a menstrual, cu- menstrual cup or period underwear. I didn't think getting Leah to use tampons right away was a good idea. It was her first period. She's still young. And I also felt like it would be overstepping if I taught Leah how to use a tampon without permission from her parents. I agree. You know, you can't be fucking shoving a tampon on your first period. That's too much to learn in one day. Dear God. Oh, you can't handle this, Tim? It's gnarly. What's the gnarly? Bitch is What's gnarly? Thinking about an 11 year old pussy having a yes, tampon shoved that's in what it? it is. That's are you, would, are you, you know picturing what? it right now, Tim? I guess if I had to if I had to say what the what the gnarly thing is, is <laughs> yes. It's the fact that we're talking about a freaking child. A child's virgin vagina getting a p- piece of cotton shoved up it? We don't know if she's a virgin going. All right. Yeah, maybe it wasn't her period at all. Maybe it was blood from her fucking hymen ripping from getting pounded by some fucking 11-year-old kid. Or riding a horse or one of her uncles. Go ahead. My partner was in a meeting, so his phone was on Do Not Disturb, and he di- had he didn't see my message until a few hours later. I hate partner. Here's the other thing. When she was like, my partner, immediately I was like, you're an asshole. I hate when people are like, this is my partner. Shut up. What should she call a person she's not married to, but um, that she lives with and leeches off of her for money? Uh, special friend. A special friend. Okay. All right. Um, uh, I don't have the mom's. She said their mom's contact. contact. I'm assuming they're British. Oh, um, yeah. This led to another problem. In our country, you can't leave kids alone until they're 14. I don't have a car, and I don't feel comfortable taking two kids anywhere on public transport without their parents being aware, especially when one of them bled through her pants. I think that's reasonable. So she only had one pair of pants also? Wait, this motherfucker's in the other room? Her dad is in the other room? doesn't say that. Where does it say her dad is? In a meeting. So what? Give him a call. Your daughter just had her first period. You're allowed to- She said she called, and and he wasn't picking up because he had it on Do Not Disturb. All right. In that situation- um, I decided to let Leah use my period underwear. It was a little big for her, ugh, but it was thoroughly cleaned and dried. Not sure if relevant, but I've only used the underwear once. Not relevant. No, you've bled in them. I'm on birth control, and I get my period less than once a year. Also not relevant. Um, I thought this was the best solution until my partner picks up some pads on his way home. See, he's not at home. Okay, all right. Damn. Aside from assuring Leah that the bleeding was normal, I waited for my partner to get home and discuss with his ex-wife how to give Leah the period talk. Okay, she should already know what a fucking period is. That is insane. Yeah, she should be like, she's like, oh my God, am I dying? And she's like, hold on, we have to wait till your dad talks to your mom so that they can talk to you. Yeah, this is an Adventures in the Blue Lagoon. What are you, like, fucking brand new to Earth? You don't Here's know what a period thing. is? Take a little fucking initiative with these kids, lady. You want to see them as a, you want them to see you as some kind of fucking, you know, authority figure? Maybe have some authority over them and be like, hey, listen, you little fucking piece of shit. We're going to the fucking store. Put on a new pair of pants. We're grabbing pads, God damn it! Yeah, shove her crotch full of toilet paper and take it on the road. Have the 11-year-old drive you if you don't have a car, stupid. Oh, that's right. She didn't have a car. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, if I am if I have my period brand new and all I've got to protect me is maybe somebody else's pants and some toilet paper, I don't really want to be on a bus. Wear a dress. What, so she can free leak? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Just free leak into her socks? Free leak? I mean, listen, wear a dress, put a little, like, pla- Hey, Tim, when you're actively shitting your pants, how much do you want to be on the fucking bus in a dress? I mean, in a dress, I would... Here's what I would do. If I was in the, if I was on a bus in the dress, I would take a plastic bag, I would tape it in between my legs, and I would just let it leak into the plastic bag. Like a colostomy bag, but tied to your anus? That's right. And then, when the bag is full, I would, of course, tie it up. And whip it at an old lady that I didn't like. I'd be like, what are you looking at, you old bag of shit? And I'd fuck, fucking whip my whip You're a bag. like, what are you looking at, an old bag of shit? Yeah. And I'd whip my period blood at her. All right. Well, that, that, I guess she didn't think of that. Uh, my partner has no issues with how I handled it, but his ex-wife, on the other hand, did not react well at all. She said I treated Leah like a second-class citizen because I gave her my used underwear, and she wants to change the current custody arrangement from 50-50 to 90-10. Jesus Christ! This lady sounds like a real bitch. What a fucking cunt. 
I don't. I actually don't think that this lady was being an asshole. I think she was trying her best. She was for sure trying her best. It is. Cu- it is fucking gross to give someone their used underwear, but I honestly do not know what else she should, could have done. Uh, she could have taken a bunch of paper towels, put them in her regular underwear, pop them, throw them on there. There you go. Also, I guess oh, how they don't am have... I coming up with more ideas than anyone? You take get a rag, throw it in your underwear, go out on the town. Yeah, she should have just put a rag in there. It seems impossible, improbable that there was like no other solution. Am I like the smartest man? Al- am I the only one who ever comes up with like solves for problems? This what are they crazy. solves, Tim? Yeah, solves for problems. Yeah, you solve s- problems. It's called a solve when you figure out a problem. It's I called guess. a solution, and that's corporate speak to call it a solve. And you've never worked in corporate, so I don't even know. I work at a startup, you stupid asshole. God, the solves, man. It fucking is trickling into your brain already. Um, she also said the fact that we didn't keep pads at home shows we were unequipped to parent the girls. It was her first fucking period. Yeah, you don't know when it's coming. I mean, what, are you just going to buy them? At, what, do you buy it at birth? Yeah, what, I mean, what's this lady supposed to do? She bleeds into a cup. Right. She puts a little cup by her snatch, and she fucking rockets some fucking nasty blood in there. Just stick her in a, just stick her into a bathtub and let it bleed If out. I was that lady, I'd be like, listen, here, listen to me. You listen to me, you bitch. I get my period maybe once a year because of the birth control I'm on, which I put in the thing earlier. And when I get my period, I fucking bleed into some weird ass diaper or a cup. So what do you want me to do, dumbass? That's what I would say to her. Wow. That's I would have told take her. that to court. Um, Not hit her, of course. Uh, my partner has my back. He said he would have done what I did, um, but I see he's heartbroken. His ex-wife has engaged her lawyer, and he's engaged his lawyer. He's scared that he will lose custody of his daughters or that this would affect his relationship with his daughters. Am I the asshole? Was giving Leah my underwear inappropriate? Open to your thoughts. I just want to be the best step-parent to the girls. I think she did a good job. I think she tried as hard as she could. I don't know how she handled it. She probably must have fucked up in some way, or this mom is looking for any way to get the kids away from their dad. That's what I think. I think the mom is a fucking psychopath and is trying to, like, fucking win the guy back, and she's pissed that she's a, like he's fucking some birth control bitch who he can, like, come in her on the, on the regs, you know? Yeah. This bitch was probably like, here, hold these crystals. And it'll also get it to go away if you imagine hard enough. Yeah, how about instead of shoving cotton, cotton up your pussy, you shove a crystal up there. Yeah. Think about that. Then you can walk around with a little more confidence, sweetheart. Confidence. That's right. Huh? That's All that. Right. Well, that's that. That was good. That lady is not an asshole, it turns out. But it is time for one of the best segments on the show. It is back. Ding, 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 no. ding, 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 ding. It's time for the news with Tim McLaughlin. I'm sorry, everybody. This is my fault. Don't mess with this mama bear. Grazer easily wins popular fat bear contest at Alaska National Park. I guess you weren't there. I wasn't. Anchorage, Alaska, Associated Press. When it comes Tim. to when it comes to packing on the pounds to survive an Alaska winter, this this year's undisputed champ is Grazer. Grazer, also known as Bear One Two Eight to the fans of the Fat Bear Week at Na- at Alaska's. Katmai National Park and Preserve won this year's contest handily, defeating Chunk 108,321 to 23,134 in the finals. What are you fucking talking about? The annual, I'm telling you, just listen up. The annual contest, which this year drew 1.3 million votes. From dedicated fans watching the Bears live at Explore.org is 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 way. You can do the, it. Sound wa- it out. Watching What's the, the first Bears letter? live at Explore.org is way to is way to celebrate the resiliency. No, you definitely fucked that up. Is way to celebrate the resiliency of brown bears. Tell me I fucked it up again. Read it. Tell me I fucked it up. Yeah. Go ahead. Did yeah, I? No, fuck they it up? fucked it up. Oh, thank you, Micah. Is, Fuck you, AP. He has a hard enough time. Is way to celebrate the resiliency of brown bears that live on the preserve on the Alaska Peninsula. They, I think they wanted to say is a way. Well, of course, that's what they wanted to do, which extends from the state's southwest corner towards the Aleutian Islands. That's exciting. You know who goes near the Aleutian Islands? <laughs> the crabbers of the deadliest oh, catch. Jesus. Those and those are some real men out there doing men's work. 
Now I so now, wait. This but, do they, people are just like watching these fat bears. Mm-hmm. This is some like weird fetish site. Possibly for some, but I think others just like the bears. You think people are coming to these fat bears? They're probably like, some t- Timothy Treadwell types. Uh, if do you think if I was on a crab boat, I'd die? Who's Timothy Treadwell? The guy, and yes, the, you can't even handle being at a bowling alley. <laughs> the Grizzly Man. Oh. Timothy Treadwell, he got torn apart by bears, remember? But they won't let you hear the audio or watch the video. I could get it to you. Werner Herzog is like, no one can all listen to this. It is one of the most horrifying things I had ever heard in my life. Viewers of Alaska's most watched popularity contest are glued to the computer screens all summer long to see which bears are stocking up on the most salmon. Then they vote in a tournament-style bracket over the course of a week, advancing bears to the next round until a champion is crowned. Grazer took the title Tuesday. Huh. Don't, don't look at me. Just keep reading. According to Grazer's biography on the Cat My website, the large adult female, a woman one, huh? Oh, well, they said mama bear. The large adult female is often one of the fattest bears to collect salmon on the Brooks River inside Cat May. Oh, park officials call her one of the best anglers in the park. Tim, okay, I think we get it. Fishing a bear day or night thing. from many different parts of the river. Okay, a bear eating, is fat. Okay, even yeah. chasing down I fleeing can't. salmon. Tim, I cannot wait until people vote on you tournament style to see how fucking fat you are compared to your other fat friends. Grazer is one is one of an like, estimated Tim 20 advances to round two, but Joe is coming up behind him. Grazer is one of an estimated 2,200 brown bears. That Despite call being Cat six home. feet tall, Tim's legs are only four inches long, which enables him to carry 215 pounds. Mike, there's handily. only five more paragraphs. Shut up. You a, cannot keep reading. A I true forbid mama, it. A true mama bear, she's known to attack If you keep reading, bears, I will not cover the expenses mayors. of you quitting. To ensure her cubs are safe. She's used her skills to successfully raise two litters of cubs. This year's contest Nobody was in peril just weeks ago. The Had Congress I've not come to the last minute deal to avoid a Nobody government shutdown at the end of September, Fat Bear sorrow. Week would have been postponed since the park employees would Nobody not have been allowed to count the votes. Knows. And that's the it. Trouble that's I've our news story of the day. Yeah. Fat Bear. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let us know if you really loved the news segment. It was a good news segment. Now on to our greatest segment. Reviews for the podcast. This is where you can go on Apple iTunes, leave a review. No one did that this week. Sick. But if you'd like to write Fuck a review, yes. if you're listening to this, write a review on Apple iTunes. Hell, if you're watching it, write a review on Apple iTunes. But we're also on YouTube where you can write uh, a comment and we will read the comments. But if you're watching this on YouTube, hit that like. Why don't you go smash that freaking subscribe button? And let's go ahead and hit that little bell for notifications. All right, here we go. Yeah, we talk about the news and all kinds of things, comedy. And if that type sounds like your type of thing, go ahead and subscribe right now. Last week's episode, Annoying Diseases with Trent Mabry. John M. says, great episode as always. Too funny. <laughs> Thanks, John M. Well, Uncle Jemima says, this is the best podcast on earth and the only one that makes me shoot my goo. <laughs> why, why does it get me every time? I don't know. You love it, though. I this fucking guy, love it. This guy walks around sticky. <laughs> Kyle Parks, friend of the show, says, last part about being, last part about the smells like shit hang would have bothered me also. I don't remember what that was, but. We don't like people that smell like shit. Uh, IH Jello says, I'm still confused about by Storm Daniels. What? Storm Daniels. It was the storm oh. that came in and oh, took yeah. out everybody. I think it was in the news segment. Yeah, possibly. because the news sucks, Tim. The news is good. It's a good show. Uh, all right, Micah, we've come to your That's segment. That's it? We only had four comments? Usually we, only, we have like 300 comments. I know. We only had four comments this week. Not a lot of comments. I think it's because Trent is boring and stupid and no one really liked him. Who? So, Trent. Which one is he? He was the guest last week. Oh, I don't uh, remember him. Don't now remember. it's time to fall in love with one Micah Fox. Do you have it pulled up? Oh, I do. I Soon. Knew, I knew you would. 
Oh, yeah. In this segment, Arthur Aaron sends 36 questions that make you fall in love with each other. And Tim. Front of the front of the phone book kind of dude. Are you ready to fall in love with me? We are currently in set two. Set two. Question 14. All right. Is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time? Why haven't you done it? Uh, I would like to be a guy on BattleBots. I would love to have a bot and fight a robot. Now, I haven't done it because I don't have any money. Uh, anyone I ever talk to that is anywhere close to the realm of BattleBots does not want to deal with me because I bring absolutely nothing to the table because I'm also not smart enough to build a robot, I think. I think building a robot might be really tough. Yeah. I think there's a lot that goes into it. You can't just throw some motors on the wheels and then send it on out there. You think you might need to know something about robotics, robotics and engineering? You need to know something about robotics. You need to know something about I was about hoping nobody would hear that. I heard it. <laughs> you need to know about robotics. You need to know about engineering. I think you need to know about welding. I think it's a, I think, I, I, listen, I could learn all the stuff you need to learn to put it together. But I just don't know the math to make it work. That's the thing you would have to learn, Tim. No, but I'm That's saying I can do That's part of what you have to learn. I can, like, do the top. Also, physically, you could not put it together. You are not dexterous. What do you mean? I don't see you doing any kind of fine work. You're it's kind of more of a slap big things together. I've seen you put a TV in a wall, Tim. But I also fix the bowling lanes all the time, and you have to do fine work when you're fixing the bowling lanes. You get electrocuted by going near them. Hey, I was it wasn't from going near them. It was from throwing my hand right up there on the breaker box and zip, zap, zap. I was an improv guy. It turned me into an improv man. Uh, but, yeah, so – I would like to be a part of. I, w I also just want to write for Battle. I, I want to be just. I want to be a part of BattleBots. I love it. I think it's so fun. That's what I would like. Well, that's a, an achievable goal. Some people say that happiness is uh, making achievable goals. I think we can get you there. If anyone out there has any involvement with BattleBots or in a BattleBot related show, any kind of robot show, any kind of battle show, hit us up. Make yeah. Tim's dreams. You could make one dumb man's dreams come true. Shit, I'll one even be fat, a, dumb bear of a man. I'll even be an announcer for dog fights. I don't really care. Anything that's like in a ring where somebody's getting fucked up, I'd like to be a dog part fights. Of. Now that'd be rough. Oh, she did it. Oh, no. All right, Michael. What about you? Um, I want to go to Italy. I really want to go to Italy. I've never done it, uh. and the reason why not is uh. I'm I don't I'm not good at making travel plans. I never plan ahead. I don't like to take time off of work because it makes me anxious and I'm afraid to fly. Yes. And it's a long flight over there to Italy. Mm -hmm. You got to fly to Rome, then you got to take a train. Yeah. The trains are nice though. The trains are nice over there. They're not like the trains here where someone takes a fucking McDonald's shake-esque shit on the fucking seat. Dear god. Dear god. It was horrific. Uh they should have been wearing their shit pants. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, and why can't, so you you just can't go because you're a bad plan maker for travel? I'm a bad plan maker. I've been planning to go out of the country for years now. I never actually make a plan. I never actually take the time off. I never just pull the trigger on buying the tickets. It always feels like I'm going to like regret it for some, there's something, hold, there's something internal holding me back. I think you're just scared to fly because the flying is the big part. But I do fly all the time. I'm going to LA in a week. Yeah. That's a long flight. Yeah, that's true. It's a six-hour flight. It's a six-hour flight. Are you going first class? Fuck no. Work is paying for it. I'll probably be in fucking coach like the other fuckers. Damn. But you get the points, though? Yeah. Maybe I'll maybe I'll upgrade myself. We'll see. That's cool. All right. Well, that was good. So you want to go to Italy? I want to be a part of BattleBots in some way, shape, or form. That would be cool. Are you in love with me now? I've always been in love with you, Micah. But more in love with me. Yes. Are you really? No. Damn. I'm as in much in love with someone as I could possibly be. There's no more room for love in my heart. The thing heart. is, the thing you just said, I already knew about you, so it didn't give me a room for more love. Is there anything that I don't know about that you want to do that you haven't hap made happen? Hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. I really just want to work at BattleBots. I bet it fucking sucks, too, working over there. I bet I'm like, I want to work at BattleBots, and then I work at BattleBots, and it fucking sucks. Shit. Every job sucks. That's why I just want to win. The one real thing I want to do is win the lottery. 
And the thing that's keeping me from that is reality. Mm. That it is impossible to win the lottery. That fucking guy who won the lottery, the $2 billion lottery, he just spent almost $100 million on houses this week. Yeah, Mike has sent me that, and I was like, Mike, I don't give a shit if this guy spends all his money. Who cares? Just Who improper- gives a fuck about that guy? Why do you care? In property taxes alone, he's about to be fucked. I mean, granted, $100 million is nothing compared to $2 billion, but it wasn't $2 billion take-home, let's be honest. It was something like $600 million take-home. He already spent seven- a sixth of it. It's not good. It's he's not probably going to spend all his money. Who oh. cares? Fuck him. Who gives a shit? He was handed six hundred million dollars. Who gives a fuck if he spends all of it? It's impo- It should be impossible to do. It's How not do you impossible. Fuck that you up? can't even buy a jet from the military for six hundred million dollars, like a F one Raptor or whatever. Those things cost like a billion dollars. Oh, each one of those jets costs like a billion dollars. You can't even buy one of those. Fuck. What's the point? I know. See, that's what I'm saying. There's things you still can't buy. I just want I just want some fucking land in a house and to be able to pay someone else to take care of it all. Can't I just have that? I mean, we could have that. We just have to leave New York. If we literally moved anywhere else in the country, we could have that. Well, I guess I don't really want it. <laughs> well, there you go. And now a count point counterpoint, I guess. <laughs> Uh, all right, so now it's time for a p- fun party story. Or it, what about what? What's like a bad? Oh, what was the thing that they were they saying? They said they wanted um, things not to do, party fouls. Yeah, like bad hang, like do, to Tips be for being thing. a bad hang. Yeah. You know what is? You know what is a bad hang? If you're hanging out with a bunch of people that you kind of know. I knew you were gonna say this. What? This is the thing you talked about last week. What did I? Well, okay. What do you think I'm gonna say? I think you're gonna say like, and uh, and you like sort of like take credit for like knowing someone better than you do, or you're like, oh, that's our Tim. No, nope. not a, not that. Oh, that's okay. not what I was gonna say. Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna say if you're hanging out with a bunch of people you kind of know, and someone may say maybe a slur or a slur adjacent type of word. Don't immediately jump on them and call them an asshole and correct them for how they're talking. Timothy, what the fuck? It fucking bums everyone out. Like, if I call someone the R word and then someone's like, you can't say that. Why would you even say something like that? It grinds the hang to a halt. That's right. Don't be a scold, even if you're right. Don't be a scold. Later. Bring it up later, like via yeah. message or something. To be your a, therapist. Yeah, be like, To hey. someone who might actually give a fuck about your sensitive little feelings. Be like, hey, I'm sorry. I didn't want to bring it up because the group of people was laughing and I would have looked like a complete fucking goober. <laughs> but when you said uh, blah, 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 it really offended me and da, 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 da. That you can do that. And then we'll know not to hang out with you. Then I'll know. I'll, and I'll say, I'm sorry I offended you. I'll never hang out with you again. That's right. Yeah. So there you go. There you I go. think that I think That's being a, a tip, scold Tim. for in a hang is bad. Absolutely. Um, and mine is uh, don't just fucking jump on somebody like don't in- if you don't know somebody very well, don't like insult them for the thing that they're known for in- being insulted by. Like if someone is always dumb, they'll just be like, oh, well, that's because you're dumb or like, you know what I mean? Find your own thing to make someone fun of someone for. Right. You know? yeah, like yeah, yeah. you can't just f- worm your way into a into a community by like picking up am i explaining this right yeah it's like the other day when wilford was telling like when when sean donnelly yelled at wilford yeah because wilford was like you're just so like dumb and fun up there it's just like so stupid and dumb and well and donnelly was like i don't know you why are you saying this shit to me that's right that's right (coughs) so yes i understand what you're saying yeah, don't like. Yeah, don't don't just assume. For, like, either you have something very insightful and funny and mean to say, or shut the fuck up. Don't just say a cliched thing about them to get in. Right. It's not. It's not cool. All right. All right. That's good. That cool. was good. Bad hang stuff. Yeah. All right. We're down to our second to last segment of the show. Speak ill of the dead. Ooh, spooky. Did you think of a dead person? I did. I did too. My dead person was born June 1st, 1926, in Mount Airy, North Carolina, and he died July 3rd, 2012, a day before the greatest holiday, in Manteo, North Carolina. And that person is Andy Griffith. Oh, no. 
I heard stories recently that Andy Griffith was a real fucking piece of shit. Really? Yeah. Andy I, Griffith? Yeah, I heard that on the set he was like a fucking... America's Matlock? Yeah, and I heard he was a real fucking asshole on the Andy Griffith show. And like, if you delivered your lines wrong, he'd like scream at you and like have your lines deducted like the next week. He'd have you like taken out of like an episode. He also was plowing some bitch on set and cheating on his wife for a long time. That sounds pretty cool. I heard he was drunk a lot. I heard he was a real fucking asshole on the set. That sounds awesome. Well, rest in piss, Andy Griffith. And I hope the devil's butt fucking you in hell, my you, my good bitch. I hope the devil's taking away your lines and fucking your wife. I hope the devil's fucking into this beat. This is good, Tim. Yeah, pretty good. That's a, this is a beat to the Andy Griffin show. Yeah. You know, I hope he's fucking him too. Dun 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 Is that to Matlock? Yes. You I don't never, know Matlock? I never watched Matlock. I'm not 900. Oh, okay. Or nine and sick at home, I guess. Matlock fucking rules. You know who loves the Andy Griffith show? Old people, dead My people. My aunt Christy. She loves the Andy Griffith Show. I remember on her birthday once we took her to the Andy Griffith restaurant in Avon, Indiana. There was like a Mayberry. What do they serve there? Like corn cakes and shit? Yeah, it's all like uh, old. It's like all Andy Griffith Hoe stuff cakes everywhere. And Jimmy Crack corn. And took her to the Mayberry Cafe. It was a long drive. And I was like, this is too far away. That sucks. But it was fun. We had a nice time. She loved it. What would you eat there? I don't remember. Probably meatloaf or something. Yeah. And uh, I would like to speak ill of a Grecian man known as Charlemagne, who is Whoa. the first person to print uh, coin money. So basically invented money. And I don't know. I just kind of feel like society went downhill ever since we stopped bartering, mm. you know, because like once you could start hoarding coins, hoarding wealth, I feel like. It's just bad for society, you know? Yeah, that's It's not true. good. It's probably, it's you know, some people think it's the root of all evil, which means Charlemagne is the root of all evil, and he can go fuck himself, and I hope he's in hell with the devil um, having his coins shoved up his ass. Yep, I hope the devil is taking a roll of quarters and butt-fucking you with it. That's right. I hope, he's, I hope you have to barter for a little getting your dick out of your ass. Yep. All right, well, good. So take that, you sacks of shit. And that was that, and now we're down to our final segment, of course, which is sign-offs. Sign-offs. Signing off, it is I, the greatest man to have ever lived. A man who puts his safety in front of everything. The safest boy who's never been hurt or electrocuted once in his life. Timothy Grady McLaughlin II, your Patreon dad. Patreon.com slash grading. Your free feed. Best friend. Thank you all for listening. And signing off, it is I, the nicest woman in the world. The woman who would rather put her um, special friend's safety in front of her own financial welfare. A person who thinks that period underwear is fucking disgusting. You should not be rinsing blood out of your underwear in the sink and drying it for another day. That is fucking gross. And I also think having stepkids is disgusting. No, stepkids are cool. No, it is lame. And you should kill the your part your special friend's old family and start fresh. It is me, uh, Toey's mom, Tim's special friend. Nice. And your friend and podcast host, Mike Fox. And I hope you guys have a great, great rest, rest of the day. day. Bye.